Hi, I'm here to show you something that you can do at home using some things that you already have in your kitchen. So a little science experiment that you can do at home. Um, there's three things that you're gonna need for sure. You're gonna need an egg, you're going to need some store-bought vinegar, and you're gonna need a jar. Um, and it's nice if the jar has a lid, but this can just be an old jar that you got from spaghetti sauce or whatever else, just any old jar, um, but it's nice if it has a lid. Uh, there's some other optional things that you can have as well if you wanna do some extra work on this. Um, and so if you have a ruler, that's great. Um, if you've got a pencil, that's something that's great to work with. Um, if you've got a, a notebook that you can record your results in, um, that would be good as well. Um, and if you happen to have a kitchen scale or something like that that you use for uh, weighing food in your kitchen, that's also wonderful. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna be uh, removing the shell from this egg, but we're gonna be doing it without cracking the shell. We're actually gonna be making the shell completely dissolve away uh, from this egg. And so before we do this, um, if you have some of these other tools available, you might wanna do uh, some measurements um, and record what your egg was like before we started this experiment. And so you can write down what it feels like um, to the touch. Uh, you can record the color of the egg. Um, and your egg might not be white, mine is white, but it depends on what type of egg you have. And so you can record the color of the egg. Um, make a note of the state of matter. Is this a solid or is it a liquid or is it a gas? Um, so record what state of matter your egg is. Um, record what your egg looks like. Is it shiny or is it dull? Um, you could even record the temperature of your egg. If you have a balance, you can record the mass of your egg. Um, and if you have a ruler, uh, you can record uh, the size of your egg. Um, you can record all sorts of different dimensions. You can record the height. You could record the width. Um, you could even run a string around the outside and record what we would call the diameter of the egg. And so you can record any of those things that you want. Um, just make a list of all of those things in your notebook uh, so that we know what the egg was like before we started. All right, so to do the actual experiment, oh, one more thing that you can do that's a little bit fun. If you want to, you can do what my son did here. You can draw a face on your egg. And so you can do that using a pencil. Um, just draw a little face on your egg and that would be great. All right, so what we're gonna do when we're ready for this experiment is very gently, you're gonna need to slide the egg down into the bottle. And this needs to be done carefully because we don't want our egg to crack. And so it's easiest if you put the bottle on its side kind of insert the egg and then just very gently kind of roll it or slide it down to the bottom of the bottle uh, so that it's ready to go. Um, once you've done that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna completely fill this bottle uh, with vinegar. And we need a lot of vinegar in order to do this. And so vinegar uh, that we purchased from the store is a 5% solution of an acid that's called acetic acid. And so there's acetic acid in here. Um, and it's 5% acid, 95% water uh, by weight. Um, and so that's just what we're putting in here. Now it turns out that the egg shell is made of something called calcium carbonate. And that calcium carbonate will react in an acid-base reaction with the acetic acid. And it produces three substances. It produces a salt that's called calcium acetate. And that salt will dissolve in the water. Um, it'll produce a gas called carbon dioxide. Uh, and you might be able to see it here, but there's some small bubbles of carbon dioxide already forming on the surface of the shell. Um, and then the third thing it's going to produce uh, is actually more water. And so it's gonna make some additional water that obviously you won't be able to detect because we added 95% water and only 5% of that acetic acid. That's what's in vinegar. Now it's gonna take a lot of acid and that's why we need so much vinegar. So I've used about a quart of acid here um, in order to do this reaction. And it's gonna take a long time for our shell to dissolve. And so if you don't want your house to smell like vinegar, what you can do is place the lid on top, but you don't wanna secure that lid by screwing it down tight. And the reason is that it's making this gas, and so we need a place for that gas to be able to escape. So we need this lid to not be screwed on tight, otherwise that gas won't be able to escape. And if that gas can't escape, it'll actually slow down the reaction. Now this is gonna take, um, three or four days for this to happen. Uh, it might be done in one day, it might take two or three days. You'll be able to tell when it's done because the egg is gonna really change the way that it looks. And so we're gonna come back in just a few minutes in the video. Um, we're gonna fast forward a few days and you'll be able to see what this looks like. Uh, but for now, um, you'll notice these bubbles forming and after just a very short amount of time, this egg is actually gonna start to float. 
Uh, and so you'll see it float up to the top. That's because of all these bubbles forming on the surface. And so you'll know that that reaction is happening when, those, uh, when the egg starts to float. So I would recommend checking back on this egg in about um, 30 minutes to an hour and just see what it looks like. And then we'll need to leave it for several more days.